Thanks for joining me. We're going to look today at the second chapter of the book of Ruth. But for just a moment before we do, we'll get just a bit of a review. You'll remember that as chapter one ended, Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, have made their way back from Moab to Bethlehem. Along the way, Ruth repented of her ways, her Moab ways. She repented of the land and of the people of Moab, and she committed to the people of Naomi, that is, the people of Israel. And Naomi, you would think, would be somewhat happy about that. She doesn't seem to rejoice in the decision of her daughter-in-law. In fact, as they come into Bethlehem, she's overcome with bitterness. She tells the townsfolk, don't call me Naomi. Naomi, you'll remember, means pleasant. But she said, the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. You see, she lost her husband and her sons. She even sent a daughter-in-law back to the demonic ways of Moab. And now she's coming in with just a daughter-in-law and nothing else. She feels that the Lord has dealt bitterly with her. Well, nonetheless, these two ladies, as they come into town, become the talk of the town, so to speak. And that really brings us to chapter 2, as they come into Bethlehem at the time of the barley harvest. Now, the timing here, again, is perfect in God's timing, as we continue to see God's sovereignty over these events that lead Ruth to Bethlehem and eventually to a field where she meets one who will be her kinsman, Redeemer. So let's look at Ruth chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 1 to begin. Now, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. Boaz means strength, and the Holy Spirit adds to that by saying he was a mighty man of wealth. Could also be rendered a mighty man of valor. All of these things really add to what Boaz means, a mighty man of strength. This verse is a parenthetical verse. The Holy Spirit is just introducing us to a character that we will see in the narrative shortly. So he's stepped outside of the narrative to introduce to us the hero of the story, Boaz, a mighty man of wealth related to Elimelech. Now, for one to be a kinsman redeemer, for that's what Boaz will be for Ruth as we will see going forward. One must be a blood relative, so we find that he is a close relative of Elimelech. That's Ruth's father-in-law. But one must also be able to pay the price of redemption. And so the Holy Spirit tells us that he is a mighty man of wealth. Thirdly, the Redeemer must be willing. So we'll find out later how willing Boaz is to redeem the young Ruth of Moab. Let's read on, and we're going to read now verses 2 and 3. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain, after one in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. This verse tells me something about Ruth. It tells me that Ruth has gotten acquainted with God through God's Word. There's no other indication that Ruth has any idea that she has the privilege of gleaning the field, other than what is written in the book of the law. Three times in the Old Testament law, it is written about this law concerning gleaning the field. It was reserved for those who were poor, strangers, orphans, widows, and those who were otherwise too poor to fend for themselves. God had set that in motion, a plan for the needy to have what they need. And Ruth knew about it. Naomi didn't bring it up, seemingly. But Ruth has been developing her relationship with her Heavenly Father. And she's been reading the law. And she understands that the law provides for her to have her needs met. The law said that those who were field owners and uh, those who had vineyards, they weren't supposed to reap the corners of their field 
And when the reapers would pass through, if they left anything behind, they weren't allowed to go back and get it. Those things were reserved for the gleaners, the poor. And Ruth has in her mind that she'll be such a gleaner. Well, you wonder about Ruth. Where is she going to go? How is she going to get in the right place? Does she know anyone? Let's look then at verse 3. So she departed and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. She happened to come to the field of Boaz. That's what your Bible says. She didn't know who Boaz was. She had no idea there was a man called Boaz. But it was very important that she get in the right field. So how did it happen? Was there a sign? Was there a voice? Was there a a nudge from an angel? Don't think so. I don't think our Bible would support that at all. In fact, if you could ask Ruth, Ruth, how did you know you were going in? How How did you get to the right field? She would say, well, what does your Bible say? It says, I just happened to get into that field. And from our perspective, that's true. There were no green lights, red lights, or arrows, or voices from heaven. But what there was, was a girl in close contact with her Heavenly Father, reading His Word. And I can imagine as she left town that day to walk down that hill to the fields, that she was saying along the way, O God of Israel, meet my need. Show me where to go. Make this a pleasant day for me. Meet our needs that I can take care of Naomi. And in her sincere prayer, trusting in the word, she happened to get into the right field not knowing how important it was that she be in the right field. But she ended up in the field of Boaz. Verse 4, Now, behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? The servant in charge of the reapers replied, She is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained from the morning until now. She has been sitting in the house for a little while. The first thing we notice about Boaz here is that he seems to be a man of very high character. He walks into his own field to his own employees and blesses them in the name of God. And they in turn bless him. You who are bosses, you have people who work for you, consider going into your place of work tomorrow and blessing your employees in the name of God. And see how that goes over. What kind of a response do you think you would get? Well, Boaz got the response of one who uh, was highly respected among his workers. But very quickly, Boaz sees someone and he asks a question. He sees the young Ruth and asks, whose is this woman? Not who is this woman, but whose is this woman? And what he's getting at is, is she still under the protection of her father? Or is she under the protection of a husband? And he was hoping for the former. You see, he saw this girl and nearly immediately fell in love with her. We've been sharing the meaning of the names of these characters as we've gone, and I've purposely not told you what the name Ruth means, but I will now. It has a double meaning, really. It means, on the one hand, a vision of beauty and on the other, friend. So if you put those two together, what we have is a drop-dead gorgeous girl with a great personality. And Boaz is in love with her. 
And we'll find out also that he's already heard about her and knows about her. But he does love her and he makes it very well known. She is a vision of beauty and a friend. As we read on, we'll see. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Indeed, I have commanded the servants not to touch you. When you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Boaz replied to her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me, and how you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and came to a people that you did not previously know. May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here, that you may eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers, and he served her roasted grain, and she ate and was satisfied and had some left. You'll remember as we read and learn from this story of Ruth, that it is a picture of redemption, that Boaz prefigures Jesus in our own redemption. So we think of Jesus when we see Boaz, we think of ourselves when we see Ruth, and Boaz has promised to bring Ruth under his protection. He says, come and stay with me. I don't want you to go to another field. I want you to stay in my field. Stay close to me. I've promised that no one's going to touch you or hurt you, and you can stay with my maids. Jesus says, Come unto me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and stay with me, he says to Ruth. He even says, You know, you can go get water anytime you're thirsty. Well, what does Jesus say to us about water and our thirst? He says, Drink of the water I give, and you'll never thirst. And then he does something unthinkable. He asks the reapers, that is, his employees, to allow the gleaners to be near. He invites her to lunch and sets her to a place of prominence right there with the employees. And he gives her bread to eat. Can you see Jesus doing that for you? Of course, Boaz prefigures Christ in the work of redemption. And she says, why have I found such favor in your eyes? And you can look at Jesus and ask the same. The wretched sinner that you are, that I am. Why has Jesus given us such grace? Why have we found such favor in his eyes? Well, Boaz loves Ruth and Jesus loves you. He wants to keep you close. Ruth's righteous ways have become quite evident to Boaz. He's heard all about her. He knows what she's done. How she left the pagan ways of Moab to take care of her mother-in-law, Naomi, committing to the ways of the God of Israel. Verse 15, when she rose to glean, Boaz commanded his servant, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not insult her. Also you shall purposefully pull out for her some grain from the bundles and leave it, that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Ruth has been the beneficiary of the grace of Boaz. Not only does she eat with the workers, she works with the workers. He says, now, 
I don't put out signs that say glean here. What landowner would do that? It's up to the poor person to know the law. But he says to Ruth, I want you to glean here. In fact, I want you to walk right up as close as you can to the reapers. And I'll even tell them to leave a little bit behind for you. And at the end of the day, when Ruth gathered all that she had gleaned, the Bible says that she had an ephah full. That's about a bushel full. In fact, an ephah is 10 omers. That should clear it up for you, if you know what an omer is. An omer, you'll find in the Old Testament, was the amount of manna the children of Israel were to gather each day. And that was to be uh, sufficient for them for the day. But Ruth has gotten 10 omers, or an ephah, of grain. And she takes it home. And let's see what happens when she takes it home. Verse 18. She took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also took it out and gave Naomi what she had left after she was satisfied. Her mother-in-law then said to her, Where did you glean today, and where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked, and said, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed of the Lord, who has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. Again, Naomi said to her, The man is our relative. He is one of our closest relatives. Then Ruth, the Moabitess, said, Furthermore, he said to me, You should stay close to my servants until they have finished all my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his maids, so that others do not fall upon you in another field. So she stayed close by the maids of Boaz in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she lived with her mother-in-law. When Ruth comes home with that large basket full of grain, Naomi is amazed at the amount she was able to glean in one day. And this is what Ruth did. Ruth took a little bit out for herself and gave the rest to her mother-in-law. That's an indication of her character, a character which has changed since she's come to know the God of Israel. And Ruth finds out through Naomi, that the man who showed such kindness to her is a close relative. Now, she doesn't know exactly what that means yet, unless she's read it in the Word. But Naomi remembers what it means. She's, she tells Ruth, this man is a close relative. And immediately, Naomi has in mind that they can be redeemed because of Boaz's relationship to Elimelech. Stay close to his maids, she said. This is a good thing. And with this news, we see the bitter Mara coming back to the pleasant Naomi. Naomi gives good advice now going forward. The advice of a backslider, which left Orpah lost for good and left Naomi with the guilty conscience of a lost soul, has turned now to the advice of one who's come back into a close relationship with the God of Israel. When we get to chapter 3, we'll see the protection that Boaz promises Ruth the Moabitess.